Conta Alaloni, Aralico, Lizaroto, and Bacaminoto, Nurlar, Minisafari, Tina Ludu, Sintafa Melilla Lindo. Or, hello everyone, welcome to my history and cover of the national anthem of one of the planet's smallest countries, Menostan. Whether you've heard of this country or not, let's begin, shall we? April 20th, 1969, along the shores of Lake Alakol in western Menostan, a science-breaking discovery was made. It was the discovery of Central Asia's oldest skeleton, the Yugdate Man. The Yugdate Man was dated to be over 450,000 years old, making his likeness of being a Neanderthal very likely indeed. Starting around 2000 BCE or 4,000 years ago was the emergence of Menostan's first culture, the Andronovo. The Andronovo were really weird. They were like half European and half West Asian, kind of like what Hungary is. The Andronovo are known for making so, so, so many wooden bowls. They left behind so many wooden bowls and no one knows why. The Andronovo people disappeared because it's a fun prehistoric hobby. In about 1800 BCE, or in other words, 3,800 years ago, was a very important event. The approximate time of when I was born, considering my humor. Oh wait, I mean the domestication of horses. The proto menonese domesticated the first horses, using them to pull their chariots into what horses and horse habitats in an age of horses and the domestication of horses do. Beginning in 800 BCE was the rise of a new group of people who would conquer Central Asia and later Eastern Europe. The Scythians. Once in Central Asia from what's now Iran, the Scythians conquered just about all of every country ending in Stan, except for Kazakhstan since it's, well, so big. Nothing really happened to the Scythians and proto menonese who were living in what's now Menostan for the next millennium. However, in 200, a new group from China arrived, the Wasun. Once here, the Wasun enslaved many proto menonese people and Scythians who were already migrating to what's now like Romania and stuff. After starting to enslave the proto menonese the Wasun would take control of Menostan. This lasted for about 200 years, which for reference is about as old as the United States of America is. In 330, a guy named Ujioli Magulu founded the Ruran Cognate. Remember from the History of Kazakhstan video? Menostan's first cognate was also the Ruran Cognate. While under the Ruran, the Meninese would be left alone by the Ruran mostly since they just wanted to keep slaughtering the neighboring Wei people for some jolly good old fun. In 542, the Iran Cognate fell to the Gok Turks, who founded the first Turkic Cognate. While under the sovereignty of the Gok Turks, the Menonese were weirded out by the Gok Turks, who liked to drink yogurt dilated with water, also containing salt, sugar, and beetroot. So, there's that. In 603, internal issues and corruption led to the collapse of the first Turkic Cognate and to the Western and Eastern Turkic Cognates. We care only about the Western one in this case. After the Western Turkic Cognate would fall after only a decade, and during its existence, I bet a lot of people drink more water dilated with yogurt, sugar, salt, beetroot stuff. Who cares about them? How about we just care about who conquered them? After the fall of the Western Turkic Cognate came a golden opportunity for someone to conquer Central Asia, including Menostan. That someone was the Tang Dynasty of China. In 618, the Tang Dynasty conquered what's now Menostan, and lands which would belong to other countries in the current day, like Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and more. The Tang would rule the Menonese for a while. However, the Tang were at least a little bit friendly. After the fall of the Tang Dynasty in 903, roughly came a for sale sign on Menostan. Know who would buy it? The Karakhanid Kagani, except they didn't buy it, they conquered it. During the next three centuries of rule under the Karakhanid, the Menonese would be exposed to that thing called Islam. However, as the saying goes, nothing good stays, as the Karakhanid Kagani collapsed in 1212, as it just kind of fell apart, you know? Just before the fall of the Karakhanid Kagani came something that would change the world forever. In 1206, Temujin Khan, better known as Genghis Khan, founded the Mongolian Empire. By 1223, the Mongolian Empire had conquered all of Menostan, not like it's that big. 
But the death of Kublai Khan in February of 1294 saw the split of the Mongol Empire. The Mongol Empire split into four smaller Khanates, which caused the Menonese to find themselves subjects of the Chagatai Khanate, which would rule until 1347. While subjects of the Chagatai Khanate, the Menonese had to learn to grow gravity-defying mustaches. The Chagatai Khanate would fall to another Khanate in 1515. In 1516, the Kazakh Khanate, not to be confused with Kazakhstan, which I made a whole video on already, took control of Menestan. After gaining its territory, the Kazakhs imposed a lot of laws on the Menonese, which would inspire some of the laws that the modern-day country of Menestan uses today. However, the Kazakh Khanate was doomed from the beginning of ex existence, since its army was pretty small, looking at other Khanates for comparison. Speaking of the Kazakhs having a small army, it was easy to be conquered. Speaking of being easily conquered, in 1643, the Kazakh Khanate lost control of Menestan since they were defeated in many battles by the Zungars, whose name is weirder than my dog. The Zungars told the Menonese to stop practicing Islam and to start practicing that thing called Buddhism specifically the Tibetan branch of Buddhism, as the Zungars were the cousins of the Tibetans. The Zungars would rule Menostan for just a century and a half, as they would be conquered by a people from the east. In 1755, the Zungar Khanate fell to the most powerful Asian state at the time, the Qing Dynasty of China, the last one. After defeating the Zungars, the Qing were able to try to force the Menonese to accept the rule of the emperor, which they did after putting up a stink, but they eventually did since they didn't have a choice. In 1814, the Russian Empire twisted the Qing emperor's arm to just give them Menestan, which they did without caring since it is so small. The Menonese would face discrimination as a result and would mean under the Russians in a way for another 175 years. In 1917, the Russian Empire became the Soviet Union. However, Menostan didn't become a Soviet Republic. Instead, it was just allowed to do its own thing. And after this came the World Wars. From 1914 to 1918 and 1939 to 1945, Menostan lost 30,000 people combined, a quarter of its entire population at the time during both wars. However, the country would recuperate from its predicament, unlike some people. Since World War II, Menostan has changed a little, but surprisingly not much. In 1998, Menostan refused an invitation to join the European Union, since, well, you know, where it's located and stuff. And in 2019, Ivor Semovich became president of Menostan. And there it was, my history of Menostan. Thanks for watching part one of this video. Now for part two of this video, the National Anthem. And with that, I now present my cover of the Menonese National Anthem, Khodoroka Nikoroko Tun Stufalio, or Call of the Warrior. Enjoy. And with that, that was my history and cover of the National Anthem of Menostan. Thanks for watching. Now that I think about it, Menostan truly is a small country that no one has heard of. Really, no one's heard of it. I wonder why. Since Menostan doesn't exist, happy April Fool's Day. Did you totally buy everything in this video? Sorry I wasted 10 minutes of your life. Nothing in this video was true. At least, most of it wasn't. The Khanates and Khaganates and all the empires and stuff were all real, but everything else I said about Menostan and the Menonese was totally fake. I faked everything in this video, including the flag, the name, and the national anthem. Did I do good? Happy April Fool's Day, and also I hid some Easter eggs in this video because why not? I'll reveal two of the three. The first one I'll reveal in the intro was of 
the date of that fossil. It was found on April 20th, 1969. If you write that in number form, you get 42069. Ha 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 ha. And also, I said the name of the fossil was the Yugdade man, which Yugdade spelled backwards is dead guy. Did you notice those or not? But they did or didn't. Happy April Fool's Day. Thanks for watching. And as for what's coming up next, my next video will be on the history of Easter coming out in three days on Easter Day. Thanks for watching. Happy April Fool's Day. Thanks for watching.